have uh, 48 slides uh, and 90 minutes. That means I have to go uh, two and a half slides at a minute. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, the title uh, obviously is uh, coming from uh, uh, Paul uh, Carpolani's <coughs> book, the great book and the great transformation. In the book, he talk about uh, the Shall double. Uh, double uh, movement. This is a quotation from uh, Carl Polanyi. The expansion of the market force would sooner or later be met by a counter movement aiming at preservation of man and nature as well as the productive organization and so on. So that's my inspiration come from this book, even though it's a pretty old book. The argument is very simple. Uh, China in the last 25 years or so has undergone a great transformation, which consists of the double movement. On the one hand, there's a politically induced transformation to the market system. On the other hand, uh, recently we have seen the counter movement and the kind of a self protection from society. Uh, here's an outline. I'm going to talk about the double movement uh, and divide the, the recent history in the three sub period and then talk about the emergence of a social policy, and uh, uh, then very briefly I will talk about the two uh, key experience uh, uh, factors. Double movement in, in, in China. Uh, I will divide in the, the recent history into three uh, periods. One is from 1949 to 1984. I don't use in the 1979 or 78 as a uh, dividing line. Here, uh, in the first period, I would call it a, some kind of a moral democ uh, moral economy, uh, in which there's no need for direct state provision provision of social policies. Uh, second period, from 1985 to 1998, uh, uh, in this period, uh, uh, in China, it's called the uh, So it's an efficiency or economic growth as the priority and there's a very little attention to uh, social policy uh, whatsoever. In fact, in this period, we have seen a kind of a state withdrawal from providing uh, social services. The third period, I think, starts sometime from 1999 and uh, all the way to present. Uh, in this period, we began to see emergence of the social policies. Uh, from in, in, in the first period, uh, the, the moral economy period from 1949 to 1986 <coughs> is a, a branded economy and uh, uh, the securing of the human neighborhood was uh, uh, submerged in the uh, in, 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 uh, whole economic policy. I think it, uh, you cannot make a distinction between economic policy and social policy because they are uh, really the two things uh, in, in one. In this period, the most important thing is not redistribution, rather it's a distribution. So uh, distribution was in the main form of resource <coughs> allocation and a social uh, integration. And uh, this is, a, I think, a, a system looks like uh, in a period from 49 to 84, you, know, you have the central budget and the local budget in between is a self-budget constraint. And uh, then the local budget related with uh, individual uh, uh, work unit in the countryside and the, uh, the, the brigade or production team. So um, the relationship between them is also somehow self-budget constrained. And then the work unit and the local, uh, the rural uh, brigade and the production team provide the, the protection and the services to the individuals. So that's the old system, the, the, the through distribution. Then in 1984, this kind of a paradigm shift uh, in ideology. Rather than uh, equality and security, the Chinese policymaker placed their top priority on fast uh, aggregate economic growth. Opposition, uh, opposition with the fast possible uh, GDP, uh, GDP growth rate made them ready to tolerate a certain degree of inequality and uh, sacrifice some basic human needs, including health care and uh, uh, something else. And uh, in this period, I, I, I argue uh, from 84 to 19, 
1998, actually you can see uh, three <coughs> stages of development. First stage is basically uh, the development of a market. Uh, I, I make a distinction between market, market system, and market society. Uh, second, second stage, we see the development of a market system from 84 to 92. Then in early 1990s, we began to see a kind of a social uh, uh, market society and everything subject to the logic of uh, market forces. And uh, I just give you two examples to show the state would rule from uh, uh, the providing social services. One is health care. You can see in, in early days, uh, the, the state, the government budget and uh, social insurance uh, provide almost 80% of the financing for health care. Yeah, that's at the beginning of economic reform. And uh, for the first few years, that uh, more or less remained the same. But since the middle of the 1980s, it began to decline all the way to, to the oops, to in the period of 1998, to a very low level. The state uh, budget only accounted for about 15% of overall uh, health care expense. Another is uh, uh, expenditure on education. You also see uh, the state withdrawal. I mean, uh, the overall education expenditure, the, the, the government budget, budgetary education uh, at the beginning, uh, in early 1990s, is still uh, about uh, two thirds of the total, but uh, by, by middle of the 1990s, it's down to about 50, uh, 53, 54. So it's declining uh, substantially in the period. And uh, during this period, the, the, the old planned economy or moral economy uh, break up. Uh, you see between central budget and the local budget, uh, instead of in the soft budget constraint, now become a hard budget constraint. And between local budget and individual uh, work units, again, uh, it's a hard budget constraint. And between units and individual workers, uh, uh, then uh, many services stop. For instance, uh, health care, uh, uh, in, they still have a kind of entitlement, but an individual work unit may not have money to uh, reimburse the cost. So many people uh, accumulate a lot of uh, bills, but they were not capable of uh, uh, re getting reimbursement. So many people suffer in the period. And uh, in this kind of economy, borrow in the uh, Karl Polanyi's term, the economy becomes disembedded from the, uh, the society. And uh, as a result, we see all kinds of a social inequality uh, was growing. I, I have done study in terms of uh, uh, the regional disparities, also the, the, the inequality in uh, house, uh, health uh, financing and health uh, uh, treatment. Uh, also, uh, I contributed to the, the UNDP uh, 205 uh, Human Development, uh, Develop, uh, Development Report for China, which focused on uh, uh, inequality. You see, on all dimensions, inequality was growing in 1990s all the way to early 21st century. So this is an overall uh, <coughs> picture of inequality and uh, the GDP coefficiency, uh, coefficient, uh, um, both rural and urban and uh, aggregate national, one with the cost of living uh, adjustment, with uh, another one is without. In any case, we see uh, inequality was growing in the uh, 80s and the 1990s. And uh, somewhere from 1998, 1999, we see a different uh, turning point. Uh, I, I, I've seen the emergence of a social policy. Uh, uh, during the previous period, uh, the market and liberalism has made the demand on the ordinary people that were simply not sustainable. As, uh, as such, uh, dissatisfaction intensifies, social order become more problematic and the danger increase that the political leaders sought to divert discontent by some, somehow reinventing the economy with society. So we see, began to see some kind of a counter movement. And uh, we see uh, 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 in some area, we began to see the commodification of uh, uh, certain services. And we also began to see redistribution of resources, the incomes, and, and so on. 
So this is a, what looks like the, the, the current or emerging pattern between uh, the relationship between the state and the individuals. Uh, so the individuals, uh, the work units no longer play much role in terms of pro uh, pro providing social services and the security. Now the individuals directly link with the state. Uh, on the one hand, they, they pay taxes. And on the other hand, they begin to receive the, the services uh, uh, provided by state directly. And uh, since 1990s, uh, uh, we have seen many new social policies. There, there's a kind of a, a very brief summaries uh, uh, in terms of a new policies introduced uh, throughout uh, the recent years. From 1990, for instance, the Go West policy, so that uh, to narrow down the, the, uh, the regional uh, uh, disparities, and uh, all the way to 90, year 2007, many new policies uh, uh, began to introduce. I don't have time to go into the detail. You can uh, go to the PowerPoint and uh, download the PowerPoint and see the details anyway. And uh, those policies has a policy, uh, has a purpose to, uh, to do two things. One is to reduce the, the income inequality, uh, income inequality between regions and the income inequality between urban and the rural area. Another is to reduce the human insecurity uh, in terms of a, a minimum income, uh, worker-related injury, health care, unemployment, and old, old age uh, pension. Let me just uh, go very quickly to those tables. I think uh, uh, we should somehow bear out my observation uh, to, to the emergence of social policy. This is about the, the re, uh, to re reduce regional <laughs> income inequality. Uh, we have seen a great deal of increase of intergovernmental <coughs> intergovernmental transfer between central government and local government. Uh, in 1994, when the policy was introduced, the intergovernmental transfer was pretty minimum. It's only about 200 uh, billion yuan, uh, uh, 2,000 billion yuan. But by by year 2007, by this year, the total tra uh, transfer uh, amount to uh, one, uh, 30, 16 thousand billion yuan between central government and local government, a huge amount of money. And uh, uh, most of the money, the transfers, go to either the western provinces and the central provinces. The coastal provinces receive only 10 percent of the total <coughs> transfer in the period from 1994 to year 2005. So transfers have helped reduce the vertical and horizontal physical imbalance and therefore the regional inequality. Uh, you can see from this, this figure, and uh, we, we see in the convergence of a, proven, a provincial growth rate, a GDP growth rate. In, nine, in middle of 19, uh, early 1990s, the, the, the gap was huge. And the coastal provinces grow at a rate of 20% a year but in the Western provinces grow much slower. Even though comparatively, compared to another country, 10% is quite a, a respectable rate, but uh, within China, the rate, the, there's a huge gap between the growth rate uh, between uh, different regions. But by now, by year 2005, 2006, we see the grow, growth rate uh, come very close, uh, um, more or less the same. Also, uh, when I, I published three books on regional disparities. Uh, uh, so many Chinese uh, uh, news reporters uh, ask me uh, to predict when uh, the gap, uh, regional gap, will begin to, to reduce. At that time, I think it, it take at least 20 years to 50 years for the regional gap to, to begin to, 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 to uh, reduce. Uh, I, I only predict the, the, the slower, slower growing of uh, increase. But now we, we see, after seven years of the introduction of the Go West policy, already seeing the decline of regional uh, inequality. And uh, also, uh, to reduce the rural-urban gap, uh, China, Chinese government, especially the central government, has uh, uh, introduced a kind of a two-pound strategy. One is it to take NAS from the, the countryside. So uh, this is a, give you an idea about the size of agricultural tax. The ta agricultural tax 
it's not pretty. It's not a large proportionally in the total taxation in China. <coughs> but nevertheless, uh, by year two thousand five, is still about nine, uh, nineteen billion Chinese yuan. But in year two thousand six, is abolished altogether. Therefore, this is none. And uh, also, this um, given move, central government given move to the countryside. The central government, uh, in order to compensate the loss of agricultural tax, the central uh, government transfer the money to support the, the fee to tax uh, reform. This is a yearly allocation for that specific uh, reform. This is the overall uh, uh, the transfer from uh, central government to the countryside. Uh, overall transfer, you can see by year 2007, uh, year annual uh, allocation to the countryside uh, from central budget alone, not from the provincial budget, uh, stand for about 400, uh, 400 billion Chinese yuan. Uh, you can divide it by the population. You can see this is a huge amount of money uh, for the rural residents. Uh, therefore, we began to see the, the narrowing over of the, the gap between rural and urban. For years, uh, it's growing at a very fast rate, but in the last uh, few years, it's, then, it's remained more or less uh, uh, the same. It's a ma very marginal increase in the last couple of years. Uh, we uh, just give you an idea about the per capita uh, expenditure on health care and education. Uh, for many years, uh, the rural and urban <coughs> per capita expenditure in those two fronts has been growing, but in the last several years, we see the declining. And uh, then I will go very quickly. The, the urban minimum income program, uh, uh, the total number of people enjoying this, uh, was covered by this program, uh, grow to 22 billion by year 2002, remain at that level. But the total expenditure for the program has grown very fast. In other words, per capita, uh, re, uh, recipient, uh, uh, the money they receive uh, is growing. This is about the rural minimum income program. It's not a large by far, but many provinces now already made the pledge to introduce the minimum income scheme for the rural uh, resident uh, as well as the urban residents. So then this is the uh, coverage of the urban basic health care insurance, uh, the uh, health care insurance coverage for the active employee and the retirees in the urban area, you can see about 80% of the retirees uh, receive uh, the basic health insurance uh, much higher proportionally than active employee. Uh, by the way, uh, government already made the, the bridge uh, sometime uh, this year or next year all urban residents will be covered by basic health care uh, program. Uh, this is about the rural uh, cooperative health care insurance. And uh, you can see last year, 48% of the rural residents covered. This year, they aim at 80%. By year 2008, uh, supposedly eight, all, all rural residents will be covered by this Xin uh, Longhe uh, new cooperative health uh, insurance. And this is about unemployment insurance. Uh, for all the formal sector employees, uh, almost 100% covered by the unemployment insurance. This is the basic pension program and the uh, urban basic pension program and uh, work injury insurance, uh, whatever. So I just want to show this is kind of a turning point sometime around 1998 uh, then in the later stage. There's a, a turnaround uh, uh, happening. Uh, I don't have time. I only have less than one minute. So therefore, I will go very quickly to, to the conclusion. Uh, and the conclusion is now the government has physical capacity and the political will to introduce a social policy, although neither is sufficiently strong. And there's still big room for improvement on both fronts. <coughs> and nevertheless, emerges of a social policy marks a historical turning point. And uh, finally, this is another quotation from uh, Carl Polanyi. I think uh, I agree with him, even though his prediction was made about 65 years ago. Uh, thank you.